So Mark, CES happened this last week. I was there. Maybe I'll talk about it a little bit on the next show. But the big news of the week was the Sapphire Gentleman's Club bringing in the Mech the Bot Johnson, the world's largest mechanical bouncer, I guess. I don't know if there's actually a world record for that. But did you see this thing? Yeah, it looks like a like a space odyssey thing that you're on the you're walking on the moon and I don't <laughs> they must be selling a lot of lap pants because I can't imagine that was cheap. So this is kind of crazy. I know it's a big PR thing, but I don't know. It'd be cool to see in real life, man. That thing's just nuts. Well, they did have the AVN Awards this week in Vegas, too. Plus, the tech bros are known to love their adult entertainment. So you got to protect the dancers somehow. <laughs> yeah, the tech bros. <laughs> We have a lot to talk about this week. Let's start with a terrorism attack in Southern Nevada, or at least that's how the government is classifying it. A man uh, on last Wednesday broke into the mega solar array facility, and he set a vehicle on fire, kind of trying to destroy, I guess, the solar array. The interesting part of this story is that this power plant supplies all the power for MGM Resorts in their 13 casinos in Las Vegas. So it seems like uh, a kind of a personal attack, but uh, he's in jail, charged with terrorism. Yeah, maybe he had like a bad run on slots or something. I don't know. But I, I, the most interesting thing about the story, I thought, was that like M MGM has their own power plant, essentially which I never even considered as a thing. And that's kind of nuts and, and cool that it's, you know, solar and all that. But I just, you think power just comes in from, you know, the same way everybody else gets power, but MGM has their own setup, which is pretty cool. Yeah, it's a solar array out there. And I think that this was a move several years ago. I seem to remember being on the news uh, just to kind of get themselves off the grid and be more sustainable and move in that direction uh, as all the casinos are trying to do. They did damage the power plant, but it said it's going to be up and running by next week and they're able to use the grid power to supply everything. So it didn't affect operations at all at MGM. But this guy, they're throwing the book at him. Act of terrorism, first degree arson, third degree arson, destroying personal property, and escape by a felony prisoner. Those are all the charges he's being given. So it seems like they're taking this very seriously, and they don't want uh, any similar incidents. And they did say it was an isolated incident. They don't think he was working with anybody else. So more uh, just a crazy dude going out there trying to destroy solar panels. Yeah, I wonder what the the backstory is. Like, why why did he decide to do this? And the escape <laughs> escape prisoner was he? Did he break out of jail and then go light stuff on fire? Like, I don't understand that charge. I don't either. I didn't see anything in the article that said exactly what happened. But maybe he tried to flee. It seems like they're just trying to throw the book at him. A terrorism charge is really serious. Although, I mean, this is infrastructure. Don't mess with infrastructure, right? This is a power plant. I guess that makes perfect sense. But yeah, it's a uh, it's a big story and one that a lot of people wanted us to cover. So we'll keep an eye on it, see if anything else happens. But for now, it just seems like an isolated incident, which is really good news. All right, so a new garage is going in at the Arts District. One interesting thing that's happened in downtown Las Vegas over the last decade or so is that it has sort of shifted from the heart on Fremont Street. Everybody kind of tourists, they always went to Fremont Street. There's always been a ton of parking there and garages for all the casinos, stuff like that. But as the Arts District has sort of grown, and there's more and more venues, people go in there for breweries and beers, and there just isn't a lot of parking in that area because it's just traditionally been more kind of industrial, stuff like that. So the city of Las Vegas is trying to solve this problem, buying a piece of land for $1.6 million at the corner of Imperial Avenue and Casino Center. The plan is to build a garage. They say it'll all be paid for by tolls, you know, people paying to park in the garage. I think this is a great idea. We need more parking in the Arts District. Yeah, I was a little surprised that they, you know, said it was going to take like two to three years to build a parking garage. It didn't seem like it would, it should take that long, but I didn't realize initially that they're buying up, you know, a property that there's housing and stuff on, so they have to move people out and, and knock it down, demolish it, and do all that, so... Definitely needed. I, I love the Arts District. I think that's, you know, we've talked about last week, Fremont Street really isn't the greatest vibe uh, right now or anymore compared to what it used to be. And I think Arts District is that place. If you want to go get more of like a local vibe, uh, downtown feel, I'd go to Arts District for sure. And, you know, the, the couple times I've been down there, definitely, I've always been dropped off by Uber or whatever, but it didn't look like there was any parking at all. So I'm sure it's just a cluster for all locals that want to go there. Yeah, they have added more surface parking over the last few years. But if you're there on a busy time, there's times where you're going to have to park far away from where you actually need to be and walk. It just really wasn't designed for the amount of people that are down there now as it's had this sort of resurgence. They do lease two adjacent lots that they're also going to use for this garage. 
although they don't have long-term leases. So they're still working on that part. And as you said, five families are being displaced or, or will be displaced when they build this. Uh, so progress uh, comes at a cost, I suppose. But I think this will be a big thing for the arts district and it's going to help it grow, right? You need to be able to put people in order to add more businesses and add more fun down there. And it is one of the best areas of Las Vegas. If you're visiting, definitely worth checking out that area, going to some of the breweries, the bars, there's good restaurants, walking around. They've even improved the streets over the last few years. We talked about like Main Street. They made it one way. They've added like lamps and trees and landscaping. It's become so much nicer. Are they, are they real trees, though? We get, yeah. <laughs> I don't know. I'll have to get my <laughs> shovel out and dig. I mean, I used to go down there all the time to Casa Don Juan, which is kind of gotten lucky that this all sprouted up around them. But it used to just be like old furniture stores, you know, those like furniture stores that sell furniture from like liquidated 20 years ago, that kind of stuff. So it's uh, great to see it in the form that it is now. And good to see that the city is sort of forward thinking into making this into a destination even more. Yeah, and like you say, if you have to park far away right now, it, you know, the the area surrounding it isn't the best. So, you know, that might make you where you're like, eh, we're not going to do it tonight because I'm not going to park my car out here and, you know, potentially have it broken into or whatever could happen. And walking back to it late at night is something you don't want to do. So they definitely need it. And I'm glad they're doing it. Wish it was a little bit quicker, but they'll get there. All right. So let's talk about the story. I know you're waiting are you chomping at the bit to, to talk about this guy who is an insider article this guy lived in a salon suite at win las vegas for a month after his apartment flooded he says he lives on like a condo on the top floor of a casino so we don't know where he lives normally but one of his neighbors like city city center right wouldn't you think yeah something like that i mean it's weird that he said it on top of like a hotel or a casino so um it could be you know the residences at waldorf there's a few options there but he lives in a fancy place on the strip and it flooded. So he decided after getting the insurance money to spend a month at Wynn in a salon suite, 1800 square foot suite. His average rate was $1,942 a night. So that's about what, 60 K for the month. And we don't know if insurance covered all of that, but no, Mark, uh, you weren't too <laughs> impressed with this story, were you? I mean, it just comes off kind of out of touch and unlikable a bit. And I mean, the the one thing, the very last thing he talks about is self, uh, self parking and how great it is to have it because his uh, condo only has valet parking. And I'm like, OK, I could kind of see that if you're not at a mega resort, because self parking, you usually have to walk forever to get to your room. And he goes on to say, like. You know, by the time I call down five minutes later, my car's there for valet. So you're not saving any time by that. And I totally think it was just to take a picture of his Aston Martin, Martin in the self parking garage as like a humble brag type of thing. It doesn't make any other sense. So I wanted to point that out first and foremost. It did look a little strange. I, as soon as I saw that picture of the Aston Martin, I was like, I would never park my car. And it's like parked pretty close to other cars. You know, it's yeah, it, maybe it was a humble brag. I don't know. Yeah, go up to the top where there's no other cars or something. I don't know. I don't know. Like it, there's no quickness in self-parking in Vegas. Like other places, if I'm at a hotel or something, I'll self-park because it you can often get to your car a lot quicker than valet. But in Vegas, that's not not the case. But interesting, at least to see what it's like to live in a hotel, especially a luxury hotel and you know, what you find yourself doing that you don't normally do because it's right there on property. So, I, you know, I did enjoy th that aspect of it, but it, some of it was just like, come on, man. Yeah, there were some interesting things. He compares the spa at Wynn and the spa at Encore, which is interesting. Talks a lot about the service that he receives being in that suite. So it's a good look into sort of that luxe lifestyle and what you can get at a luxury hotel in Las Vegas and even in other places. But it's a good look at that. What was really interesting, he said it changed his Christmas shopping patterns uh, because instead of just shopping online, because he had the shops there at Wynn, he just went and did all of the shopping there. Who shops in casinos for Christmas? I mean, yeah, I mean, but you he want to pay 40% more? Yeah, I think he even said like after he checked out, he still went back to the shops at Wynn to finish his Christmas shopping. So uh, I think they got him all indoctrinated there. He does go into a lot of the restaurants, too, that he ate at. Uh, some of the ways he used his credits uh, that he got, how he saved 15% on the room. So I do think the article is worth reading, and it's an interesting thing to do in life. And congratulations to him. I, I, uh, I'm i not jealous, but it would be cool to do that. Yeah, and I, I like uh, you know the tip he gives at the Japanese restaurant where the seat's out by the waterfall. If you call ahead 
and you just have to spend a minimum of one hundred and seventy five dollars a person, which if you're in that restaurant, it probably isn't a, a tough thing, you know, if you're breaking out among a group amongst a group and all that. So that was cool. I, I, one thing about the shopping, like I didn't realize there was like an indoor snow place that you can go for uh, the one store where he's buying a coat like they have a room that's negative 10 degrees and there's actually snow falling. So you can try on the coats and go in there. I thought that was really cool and something I haven't seen anywhere before. Yeah, that was news to me as well. So some interesting stuff. So check out that article. Now, I'm not jealous of him, but I am jealous of this next one. A local one, over $6 million playing Pi Gal, 6,443,000. At of all At places. Flamingo. <laughs> yeah, did you see the way the security guards uh, surrounded him? You know, there is an issue when you win a jackpot and you get a lot of attention. It sort of brings the eyes of a lot of people. And it can be nerve-wracking, you know, walking back to your room, doing stuff like that. And uh, we saw the, a picture of what the Flamingo security did. Basically surrounded the guy, took really good care of him. And uh, that was re that was uh, nice to see. But yeah, you don't expect to win a $6 million jackpot at Flamingo. I guess he got a straight flush with a joker. I'm not a Pi Gal yeah. player, but... I, I've never played I've never played Pi Gal before either. I was surprised that a Joker would hit the progressive cause, since it can work for like all things in a flush. Uh, you know, usually it's like it has to be the legit cards, you know, when you're playing stuff like that. So that was interesting and definitely amazing. I would probably want to get out of there as soon as possible. You know, security, take me to a limo, take me off property somewhere. I don't want anybody trying to track me down or whatever. And if he's a local, just go home or whatever. But yeah, it that would be the nerve wracking part. Like you won. Okay. Now how do I get out of here as quickly and safely as possible? Cause you just don't know these days. Yeah. He didn't keep his information private either. So he posed for the picture and all of his name is out there as well. Not something actually, I would probably do. He actually smiled on like those, uh, what were that? Was it like Ellis Island with the old people where the guy was all grumpy when he won? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. He was actually happy. So, uh, hopefully he hasn't uh, blown $6 million to win that. Congratulations to him. Now, on the flip side, do you see that video of uh, Mike Barth? He's one of these, he's a big sports better, I guess. He's in the Circus Sports Survivor Contest. He was going to win $2 million if the Indianapolis Colts beat the Houston Texans. But then the Houston Texans went for a two-point conversion at the end of the game and won, and he lost $2 million. And one of his friends filmed it and put it on Twitter. So I don't know what's worse, what nice like friend. putting that... Yeah, exactly. <laughs> uh, I, I mean, and we should, uh, you know, preface this all by saying when you're in a survivor contest, you can pick each team once. If they win, you go on to the next week, you have to pick a different. So you can't just pick like the same team over and over. So I think he was down to uh, he had to use the Jaguars, Vikings or the Colts and the Colts were playing the Texans, which were the worst team in the well, were the worst team in the NFL. So I think that's why he went that way. But yeah, they, they scored a touchdown on fourth and 22 before the two-point conversion. So it was like a double whammy. Yeah, sports betting is a, a crazy game. And it, it's, I mean, think about the emotional roller coaster of being so close to winning $2 million and then to watch it go away on, the, he must, on that. <laughs> he must win $2 million because he didn't seem like super upset. I would be breaking $2 million worth of stuff. And he's just like, oh. <laughs> <laughs> Now, while we're on the subject of sports, I do want to congratulate you that your Detroit Lions beat my Green Bay Packers. As I said on Twitter, for a Lions fan, that must be like winning the Super Bowl. So it congratulations. The la over congratulations. the last seven years, we haven't done anything. So, I mean, it was a fun game. I wish the Seahawks would have lost, so it would have been like both teams playing for it. But it was a really fun game. The end of the game was kind of crazy, some of the plays they came up with. So enjoyable to watch. You know, sad that both teams, you know, finished so strong and neither one made the playoffs. But we got next year, I guess. Yeah, congratulations to the Lion. I mean, they had two win. What were they, like two and six or something? I mean, they turned their entire yeah. season around. So congratulations to that, even if they missed the playoffs. And they beat their rival on the road. So uh, that's good stuff. All right, I did want to finish off by talking about the Resorts World loop. I finally got to check it out this week when I was going to CES. And so there's two things with the Vegas loop, right? The convention center has its own loop, the LVCC loop, which has a west station a central station and a south station and those are all connected you can get on at one get off at the other now resorts world is part of the wider vegas loop and it's the first part of that and it's like a maybe a one mile section it basically goes from resorts world across the street to the west hall except it doesn't connect in with the other stations so it kind of goes to that corner right where fountain blue is and you have to pay for this you have to pay 450 for a day pass to do it but other than that, it's basically the same experience. 
I'm not sure if it's really worth doing this considering you still have to, if you want to connect to the rest of the loop, you have to walk across the parking lot. For my purposes, it was fun to try it out and I just started out in the West Hall. But uh, the Resorts World area, you kind of go where the mall is, go downstairs and they have several different uh, cars there. You just scan a QR code. You can use Apple Pay or your credit card to buy your pass on your phone. You show them that when you're getting in the car. So this really isn't the most useful system, Mark, but it, uh, it's there. <laughs> As it's the I first said. Stop. <laughs> no, are they planning on connecting it at all? Or is it always going to be that way where you have to get out and walk across the parking lot to get into the convention center uh, section of the loop? I do believe it will be connected in eventually. They are also building a second tunnel. So right now, this part only has one tunnel, meaning that you have to wait a minute or two for cars to clear out. So when they're loading on one side, the cars on the other side are starting to go in the tunnel and then vice versa. There was a point uh, the driver said one of the drivers went in at the wrong time and we had about a five minute wait because uh, the driver had to back out. And so it is right now just a one way system just for the resorts world part. What a so, yeah, it's you know, it's not the <laughs> I'm not going to say it's the best thing ever, but I guess it's a start. And uh, they're trying to do, you know, several casinos a year. So we'll see how it all kind of ties together. But for right now, I guess if you're lazy, it works. But honestly, depending on where you are in Resorts World, it might just be quicker to walk across the street than to go all the way to the mall in order to go downstairs, wait, wait for the one-way traffic, and then go, you know, back and forth. And then if you're like deep in the convention center, then like I tested this coming back, we took the other, the LVCC loop, and then we had to walk across the parking lot and take this loop. I don't know. It just didn't seem worth it, but it was cool to do. Yeah, it seems like it'll just be people that want to check it out right now. Uh, that's the only reason to ride it because, I mean... If it drops you off there, unless you're going to the convention center, there's nothing really else that you want to ride it for. And then even then you got to get out and walk a bit. So it kind of defeats its purpose a bit. Yeah. And if somebody wants to get the Vegas Loop experience just and you're there for a convention, then you can just go ahead and use the free system, I think, to get around within the convention center. We had to show our badge or proof that we were going to the convention center. So I don't know. Keep I've that always, in mind. I've always wondered if there's no convention going on, does the loop even operate over there? Or is it just when there's stuff going on at the convention center? The loop does operate on some days, but not all days. Uh, so it's been, I don't think they really publish it, but I have seen where, especially the Resorts World one has operated when the convention center isn't open. And sometimes they have smaller conventions and sometimes they're not checking. So, I mean, if you bought a ticket, they might just let you go on. I don't know. I mean, they're just kind of following the signs. I did want to also say Resorts World, I was there during the first week that they implemented paid parking. Super simple. You just take a ticket when you go in if you don't have your card already and you can sign in. I didn't have my card with me, but I already have a account. So I just reprinted a card and on the way out, you just tap it and you're on your way out. So they make it super simple. Don't have to mess around too much. You do have to sign up for a player's club card, but that's it. So I was happy to see that. And you know, it was a, it was a fun time. Resorts World was pretty dead the, the day we visited, but it was good to get in there. Reminds me like walking through there, how much I love it in some ways. And I don't like it in other ways. I get what people say where it feels sterile, but there's some really interesting venues and decor. Like it's just a place that gives me all kinds of mixed emotions every time I go in. And this was a reminder, but it will always be the first place to have a Vegas loop stop mark with a one-way tunnel. There's their claim to fame. No, I, I, same sentiments. Like it, it, you just don't really know where it fits in or what it, what it, who they're going for there. And I think that's what leaves people uneasy with Resorts World. You know, there's parts of it that are really great. Certain restaurants look really cool, and you know, we love the lobby of Crockford's and all that. So they did some parts really great. They just don't interconnect so well. And I think that's maybe over time they'll they'll figure that out, but. Until that, I think everybody will feel a little bit uneasy about it, and it just is what it is. All right. Well, let us know what you guys think about any of these topics, Resorts World and that Vegas loop. Is that just a joke, or is it something that's going to eventually big in, build into something very big? That so-called terrorism attack, winning over $6 million in poker, losing $2 million on a football play, all that stuff. Let's discuss it in the comments. Thanks to everybody who continues to subscribe, watch the channel, tell a friend about us. It's been really fun to watch the, the channel grow and to communicate with all you guys. Just want to say thank you from the bottom of my heart. And we'll keep it going. See you guys back here on Friday with another show. Thanks so much for watching. Talk to you next time. See you on Friday. Have a good week. <laughs>